What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Shadowrun Hong Kong. My name is Splattercat, that is the wasted plastic band right there. No, we didn't take him out for a hard night of drinking, we took him out for a hard night of getting shot in the head because he killed one of our friends. So anyways, we sent a message in the previous episode that sounds so harsh when I say it out loud. When I said it in my head, I was like, yeah, that's cool and edgy and the kids will like it. And then when I actually said it, I was like, well, damn. That makes me sound kind of murderous, don't it? Either way, the plastic man had to go. I think at this point we have to go back to Kindly Chang. I haven't played the game in a while because I made the mistake of recording like two weeks out in advance. So, my memory may be a little bit hazy about the details. We're about to leave to he -yoy! And so let's go. Yes, loading screen, I would love for you. The trip from Shek Kip Mai back to Hiyoi is quiet as you process the information revealed by the plastic-faced man. Prosperity is a name. Two names, actually. One is a secret project Raymond was working on before he left for Seattle. The other is the corporate headquarters of Sang Mechanical Services. And Prosperity Tower is where Raymond Black is being held, alive. It's also where his memory is in the process of being reprogrammed by his mother, and time is ticking. It's got like a whole weird Bates Hotel thing going on with it. The plastic face man proved surprisingly amenable and quite useful before you killed him. Your next stop is Kindly Chang. She'll want to hear this. That was the other reason I blapped him, is because Kindly Chang wanted him dead, so unfortunately, I had to feed him some plomo. Mission went surprisingly well though, so I'd like to see what rewards we're gonna get out of it. We got 10 karma, that's actually really, really, really solid. So with the karma, what I'd like to do now is let's go ahead and take a look at our intelligence menu. And I really don't see a point, I mean it would be nice to have the Fairlight Excalibur and we could do it right now. We go bring, bring, and we be the hell up out of here. But, that would mean, so we can go 11 right there, what else do we have? Like, how far in have I gone with rifles? Going in pretty far. Not like ridiculously far. We could also go range 6, quickness 7. Since we're only running one drone right now. Tough call. I don't know what I want to do nowadays with this character. We could take more ESPs, but I don't think they're that useful in this game. With the way they've changed decking to work, I think they're going to have to change ESPs too in the next game. Just because you don't do enough combat now. In the previous games, ESPs were stupid powerful and I used them all the time because you were often outnumbered because it was all stand-up combat. In this game, you very rarely fight. In fact, you try to avoid it as much as possible. And the fights are usually over in about two turns, so the ESPs, I think they're gonna need to be changed in order to make them useful again. Do Class S drones, which would be pretty badass, if we take that up to seven. Let's go in right there. I'm gonna confirm that. And I'm gonna go back in real quick. Cyberware would be pretty dope too. I mean, I wouldn't be too upset by having more HP because we have been getting hit really hard. A little bit of body never hurt anybody. I think we also put some points into Charisma while we were here too. I mean, I don't know. We can make ourselves a little bit more talkative, but I feel like at this point in the game it might be a bit of a waste. We got six left. I'm going to sit on the six right now because if we can get ourselves a good score of Karma, you step out of the MTR station into the balmy night air. An impenetrable wall of clouds, heavy with imminent rain, is blown in from the south. It covers the stars and causes them to wink out, one by one. You can smell something on the air, something electric. The wind whips up around you and the clouds begin moving in a thick grayscale swirl. The spiral builds and grows, shimmering with faint amber light. As you watch the clouds recoil in the sky, the sounds of the city retreat. A bubble of soft white noise replaces them, wrapping around your head and reflecting your own heartbeat back on you. You look down from the clouds to see the lights of the docks dancing in a warm, saturated bloom. I'm going to take a trade shot. You raise your wrist to capture the view with your PDA's built-in camera. The image swims into focus on the machine's tiny screen as the camera lens adjusts to the light. And that's when the first twinge tickles your chest, lets you know something's coming. A moment later, you feel an incredible tightness in your chest. It feels like your heart is being crushed under the foot of a giant. Your vision goes gray and your sense of balance disappears. Gradually, blood rushes in to refill the organ, inflating it like a balloon. Huh. You gasp for air and it doesn't come. Your breath shallows out and thins and makes you gasp like a suffocating fish. Your chest contracts again and again as you struggle to take in breath. You stumble forward and every cell in your body seems to vibrate. The energy thrums inside of you, pulsating and building to an unbearable crescendo. And then you're on the other side of it. You find yourself standing in a familiar courtyard, the walled city. 
You're back in the walled city. Just like in your dreams, you can taste the stench of the place. The mildew and plaster and wet dog stink of the slum. What the? The crumbling facades of tenement buildings lean into one another above you, closing in on either side and creating a narrow walkway. Just like in your dreams, there's nowhere else to go, nowhere but forward, and down the path ahead. You let your legs carry you forward. You feel a creeping sense of certainty in the back of your mind, and it tells you that you've taken the same walk hundreds of times before. The sense of claustrophobia mounts and builds with every step that you take, and it feels like you're worming your way forward down a long, dark tunnel. The humidity of the place sticks to your skin. As you proceed deeper into the walled city, a low rumble fills the air, the noise of enormous gears in motion. You feel hollow, empty, and with every step you take, you can feel that emptiness growing, an unbearable yearning unlike any hunger you've ever known. You continue walking just as you always have and just as you always meant. Hey, my drone came with me to the dream. Cool. He's my security drone. Literally, he's kind of like a security bear, but he comes with me. Make sure that I feel okay when I'm in scary places. Off in the distance, an alien silhouette beckons to you. It's her, the tall, slender thing from your dreams. The elusive figure that you've been moving toward but can never quite reach. A crowd of locals lines the path ahead, kneeling in supplication. They look emaciated, all skin and bones, clothed head to toe in dirty rags. Eh, ignore them. You brush past the kneeling figures and continue forward, and as you do so, a mounting sense of correctness builds in your chest. These people are beneath notice. They should be ignored. Your feet carry you past them, and soon enough, they fade from view. Your legs carry you deeper and deeper into the beating heart of the tenement. If you haven't reached the center yet, you must be close. It's incredibly hot and humid in here. The sweat rolls down your body in sheets. Your thoughts go hazy with the heat, and a dim sense of unease takes root in the pit of your stomach. Focus on the uneasy feeling. You try to concentrate on the unease that you're feeling, but you find it impossible to focus. The omnipresent sound of grinding gears isn't helping. Looking up, you can see where the noise is coming from. A hatch. The same door that you saw in your nightmare back when all of this began. The markings on the door are legible now. A single word in faded yellow paint. Prosperity. Suddenly, impossibly, the alien figure that you've been moving towards is standing right in front of you. At the same time, your vision finally clears and ice water runs through your veins. The walled city isn't a slum at all. It's an enormous gaping maw and the buildings are a forest of crooked teeth. The thing reaches for you. With inhuman speed and grace, it plunges fingers of polished ivory into your mouth. Slowly and terribly, it begins to wrench your jaw open and you can feel your teeth splinter, break, and... Rough fingers on your shoulder snap you back to reality. The hand clenches into a vice-like grip and yanks you backwards off of your feet. You come crashing down to the floor of the Hioi MTR station and you can feel a rush of wind just in front of you. A passing train. What's wrong with you? Strangler Bao eyes you coolly. Oni Chang's lost too many runners already. Besides, there are cleaner ways to end your life than jumping in front of a train. That wasn't a suicide attempt, asshole. I was under magical attack. He grunts and turns his back on you. Whatever. Now get up and get back to that floating wreck you sleep in. I got karma for just hanging out and being sexy? Alright, my robot came to my dreamland with me. I like him better. What's going on down here? A pair of dead-eyed transients lean against an abandoned car, their shoulders slumped. A pile of overstuffed bags lie in a heap over the sidewalk, spilling into the rain-soaked gutter. Smaller of the pair looks down and notices that his bags are getting soaked and does nothing. Seems like he's too exhausted to care. The shorter of the transients slowly shifts his attention to you and his voice comes out hollow and empty. You're one of Chang's. It isn't a question. Fine, stay quiet. We're getting the hell out of here while we still can. If you're smart, you'll follow us. Everybody with half a brain is getting out of this place. Yeah, believe me, I'm thinking about it. Smart man. Nothing can fix what's coming for the walled city, and Hiyue is way too close to that place for comfort. Too close to what? You don't know? He grunts. Suppose that you wouldn't. You're an outsider here. Didn't grow up in the walled city like we did. To answer your question, they are coming. The Yama Kings. Just like the ones in the old stories. Been having dreams about them, just like I did as a kid. But they weren't dreams this time. They were signs. Warnings. What can you tell me about the Yama Kings? Just what my grandfather told me. Respect ghosts and gods, but keep away from them. He stoops to begin pulling his bags off the sidewalk and out of the gutter. Come on, Shen. It's time to go. Man, it looks like everybody's freaking out right now. Shit's getting real.
All right, so the final tier of abilities. We can get Whirlwind, a katana attack that hits adjacent targets. Go with Ghoul. Let's him regenerate 6 HP per round for 3 rounds. That's pretty good. Is that regardless of, like, the damage that he takes? Because that would be one of the few heals in the game that lets him heal. I mean, the Whirlwind would be cool. I'm sure it would do a lot of damage. Hmm. Go with Ghoul. I like Red Samurai, but I think Whirlwind attacks on Warriors are cliche, and so I'm gonna buck that trend. With our dear friend Duncan. We've been waiting for the Shia Waste Magnet Arm the entire game. It's gonna nullify grenades, so we don't have to worry about those anymore. Sabotage, augment weapon with a mini launcher. Now strips one armor with every shot or espionage. Go with Sabotage since she's never gonna deck for us again. And then with this one, we can go with Haste. Gobbit formulates a new version of the Haste spell that harnesses the latent wild magic of Hong Kong. Channeled Haste increases a friendly target's AP by 1 for 4 rounds. When cast, Gobbit's accuracy is increased by 15%. So basically, it allows her to cast two of her spells at the same time. Gobbit can now consume spirits and imbue herself with their power. Consuming a spirit heals Gobbit for 20 HP and AP is increased during 1 during that time. Uh, both those are kind of eh. They're not bad, but they're not good either. I'll probably go with that one. It seems more useful than... I mean, if that's... If she can... If this is a mog... I'm sorry. If this is an augment of her territoriality ability to destroy spirits, it'd be better if it augmented that one to make it so that it kills the spirit and then adds this bonus on. I think it would be a little bit better. Just because you got to decide now between killing it and consuming it. And, like, how much damage does Consume Spirit do, or does it just instantly kill him like this does? There's a little bit of ambiguity here in the wording, and it's not really being specific. So, unfortunately, unless I had actually played before, I'll probably go with this one, since it does a better job explaining what it actually does. Cool. That's the final upgrade. I get the feeling we're drawing to a close here with the Nerd Castle playthrough of Shadowrun Hong Kong. A pair of men, refugees from the looks of them, stand near the city entrance. They're absorbed by their conversation, voice is low. The elf sways nervously as he speaks, but the human is steadfast. His gravelly words are harder to make out than the elves, but you can hear the agitation in them. Neither man seems aware of your presence. I'm telling you, first chance we get, we gotta get out of here. Leave the country. Things are so backed up that even if the walled city were gutted and clean tomorrow, we'd still be waiting through the fallout. Prejudice wouldn't just disappear. The elf's head dips up and down in agreement. I know. I know you're right, and you always are, but... Spoke to my sister, and she's on board. Didn't take much convincing, either. Those few of us that know about the monsters don't want to be anywhere near the city. Things like that, they, uh, leave a mark on a place. They'll never be right again. I think I'm just going to eavesdrop for right now. I don't want to spend, like, an entire 35-minute episode dicking around and talking to random people. The young troll bouncer manning the door is in the midst of patting down a prospective patron with enough force to dislocate a shoulder or hip while other shady-looking patrons walk idly past him into the club. He waves the shaken man inside, propelling him forward with a final pat on the back. People don't realize you gotta check for internal weapons as well as the external ones. And how do you do that? I've got it down to a science. You just need the right technique. Matter of fact, I caught a guy last week with a phosphorus grenade in his leg compartment. And what did you do? Disarmed him, of course. Got it back behind the bar now. I'm gonna blow it off in the river. Impress some girls. <laughs> Looking for a pat down yourself? Nah, I'll be good, I promise. You break that promise and I break you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're back on things that we've already said. It looks like there's some kind of weird dragon amoeba inside that thing. It's gnarly. Dragon fetus. Let's see if we can get paid. Do we need to talk to Kindly Chang? We do indeed. So let's see if we can't mangle ourselves some money. At least mash out some money. I mean, there's gonna be an M word involved no matter how we do this, so. Kindly Chang. You walk through the Mahjong, or your walk through the Mahjong parlors, punctuated by the tantalizing smell of coconut and fried confection. Your crew surrounds Kindly Chang, watching uncomfortably as she peels small egg-shaped delicacies from a waffle-like pastry and pops them into her mouth. Each time she does, her eyes close in ecstasy, and the soft sound comes from her throat. There you are, Splattercat. Your crew here tells me that you were able to locate and interrogate the plastic-faced man. The straw sandal's eyes narrow, and her rusty voice gets an edge. They haven't told me his current disposition, however. I assume everything went as I instructed. 
It's gonna take the face as a trophy, but I thought it would be tacky. Oh, I don't know. The triad boss smiles and her little black eyes flash. Trophies have their value. Gobbit's eyes scan the room, apparently looking for the trophies. <laughs> I trust you got something useful out of them? We got plenty. Wu sounds eager. You gave us a data dump on everything he knew about Prosperity Tower. First-hand info. Josephine's headquarters? She puts down the pastry, rubs her nose, considering. That could be useful, I suppose. What do you intend on doing with it? We're gonna rescue Raymond. He's alive, Auntie, just like I said that he was. Josephine's holding him in there. She's doing something to his brain. Something to his brain? She takes another bite of pastry. What is that old bitch up to now? Based on the memory Mr. Plastic showed us, it looks like she's trying to rewire her son's memories using something called ASSIST, Artificial Sensory Induction Systems Technology. It allows the user to record, process, and feed synthetic sensory input to the brain. Like a SimSense chip? Yes, Auntie, it's the technology that led to SimSense. It's also what allows Deckers to enter the Matrix and grants Riggers a neural connection to their drones. An expert assist technician could alter somebody's personality, their memories, even their identity. I'm guessing experts like that don't grow on trees. Definitely not. Changing somebody's memories requires a world-class expert and assist and a massive amount of computing power. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing to him, but I'm guessing that his mom wants him to forget something or to remember it differently, maybe. Okay, so we gotta get to Raymond before he isn't Raymond anymore. And that means a run on Prosperity Tower. Isabella and I have been studying the data the Plastic Phase Man gave us about it. Lots of good intel to mine there. Okay, talk to me about a security setup. How do we get to Raymond? The key to this operation are three security stations located on different floors. The matrix systems in these security stations are the command and control hubs for the entire building's security. As such, they're the best place to find out where Raymond Black is being held. That's all we've got on his location? All we know is that he's being held somewhere called Lab 12. But where that is or how to get in is something we'll still need to figure out on site. Things go hostile, the best thing to do is get to an alarm panel or matrix security node and shut things down. If we're noticed, we'll have a brief window to cut the link to the alarm system. If we do that, it'll isolate the whole floor from the security system. The rest of the building won't know what's happening there. If the alarm goes off and we cut the link to the alarm system, we can spoof the system and tell it that we've moved on to another location. That might work once or twice, but if we spoof too many alarms, they'll figure it out. How long is this brief window? Maybe 30 seconds. Maybe less if the network isn't cluttered with traffic. It's there, says a failsafe, so security doesn't stampede all over the building if the janitor forgets to close a door. Okay, guards, quantity, training. Standard corp security for the most part, but Sang has a rapid response squad for high priority events. That would be us. Sounds manageable up to the point we find Raymond. Judging by the way Grandma Sang took out Carter, Gutshot, and Nightjar, I'd say she isn't interested in anybody getting anywhere near her son. Expect to face Sang's elite security once we find him. Okay, and what else do we have on security stations themselves? Staffing and weaknesses? Only one thing worth mentioning. She looks over to Wu. The only way into a security station is with a key card, and guards on each floor carry a card to the station on that floor. So if we can get a card by taking them out, well, so we can get a card by taking them out, but there may be other ways of getting key cards. Wu crosses his arms in his chest. Like I said, the security stations are the key to this operation. They provide multiple opportunities to exploit the system and determine how to approach the rest of our incursion. Okay, security stations are high priority targets. Check. We want to take them fast before they have a chance to respond. So which station do we hit first? The little decker purses her lips. No way to know. We'll need one of them, or we'll need to take one of them and use it to determine our next step. It's like we have directions to go find on a map. Okay. How do we stop this assist thing from rewiring Raymond? All I know is that an assist device is located in Lab 12. It's the only one in the building. Now, I doubt that Grandma will just hand over the passcodes to her system if we asked her nicely. So, we'll need a Decker to access the assist device and eject him from the system safely before she scrambles his brain. Okay, and what does the Decker need to do? Like I said, we don't know. We're going to have to improvise, figure it out once we get there. Okay, what's our approach? Well, fortunately, Prosperity Tower is one of Sang's lower security locations. It's mostly administrative, marketing, that sort of thing. That's good. Kindly turns to Enforcer. Mr. Bao, give the runners those old Sang security passes you used on that hijacking last year. Yes, Mrs. Chang. They'll get them. Those passes should get you through the lobby. The triad boss pokes a fingernail between her teeth and dislodges a piece of pastry. You still have to explain your presence, Splattercat, so don't expect to just walk on through. What about that junk data you held onto after the Wu Jing run, Isabel? Anything in there we can use? Good thinking, and I'm already ahead of you. I scoured the leftover Wuxing paperwork and found a way to change our status to special couriers. 
We can use that to post the third party Wu Jing uses to deliver important packages. That'll work for a while, but we can't expect to stay in cover for long. One way or another, things are going to get hot. Okay. Well, I mean, if we can get in as courier, I think if we can get in as couriers, we should be fine on the direct approach. There's no if you're going to be sneaking around and coming through a back entrance, it seems like that's going to get you found out. Because a courier doesn't come through the back entrance. They go straight through the front and they drop it off. Let's go with the direct approach. Fair enough. We go into the lobby. On another thing, while I was helping Duck and verify as much of this data as I could, I decided to collect our marker with Bull and his team of runners. Good call. We'll need all the help we can get. She looks up at Wu, her eyes big and round. Yeah, no kidding. Turns out Bull and our runner friends hit Sang a few months back. Low rent smash and grab for another corp, but they got a quick scan of the building's matrix security before they rabbited. They gave us data flags that pinpoint where the security nodes are located inside of Sang's system. See, this is why you make friends, guys. This is why in Shadowrun, you should always take care of your own kind. You should view it as a us versus them type of deal. You should not kill other Shadowrunners, and generally you should not make other Shadowrunners angry. It's bad business. It's kind of like being an accountant and making all other accountants hate you by killing accountants and whatnot. It's not going to be good for your job security. So when we jack into a security station, we'll be able to make a direct attack on the security node. That could just buy us the seconds we'll need to cut the alarm link. Guess the marker was useful. Kindly cuts in, licking your fingers with loud smacking noises. One more thing, Splattercat. While you're in her headquarters looking for anything we can use to incriminate or embarrass Josephine Sang, I want dirt, something that I can feed to an acquaintance on the Executive Council. Someone who stands to gain from it. Does dirt come with a cash bonus? She pops another egg treat into her mouth, and her eyes close tight with pleasure. Of course, my sweet. Of course. Now go enjoy Prosperity Tower, she smiles wolfishly, and give Josephine Sang my regards. She's gonna betray us. I know she's gonna backstab us. I got a feeling. Never trust criminals for too long. You work with the mob, the yakis, you work with any of the mafia in this game for too long, or in Shadowrun in general, eventually you're gonna get burned. So Shadowrunner, you need to get used to the fact that you're a deniable asset, and bad things can happen to you. See, I could take this, like, all the way up. And we could take, we have corporate already. We could take security. And then we could take that up to five. Which would make us really, really, really good at dealing with like random. See the big thing is throughout the game we've been running into stop blocks when it comes to our charisma. And we can't talk our way through anything. And so a late game push right there. Five charisma should be enough to mash your way through just about anything. As far as checks go, but maybe not. No idea. Decking also never killed anybody, so we could go all in like so and get to the Fairlight Excalibur, but I don't even think we have the money to make that happen, so... My assumption is that this isn't the final run, though. I don't think the game is that close to over just yet. I think we could definitely use some extra cash, though. Still, our decking skills are top-notch, and we're looking pretty good right now. Let me go back to the boat. I don't think we had any outstanding business out here. But that's not going to stop me from checking. I'm going to go back to my mission terminal real fast. And I'd like to figure out if there's anything else that I haven't fiddled with just yet. I don't think I sold any data. or Oh, we have two unread messages. Since you could not handle a simple task, I have done so... Oh, we already did that one. From Dreamland. Thanks for shaking me down to get that neural inhibitor program I wrote. It's always refreshing to be physically intimidated in your own apartment. How could I ever forget it? The answer is, I won't. It may not be today, it may not even be soon, but one day you'll regret strong-arming me, I guarantee it. Same goes for Isabel, too. I know how to make her Matrix life a lot less comfortable, and I think that'll make for a nice surprise someday. See, this is why I don't leave loose ends, and I usually grease fools. The second they give me a dirty eye when I rob them, BAP! You take them out. Done. You don't gotta worry about that shit anymore. So we got pay data for Repulse Bay. And so now that we got that up and running... Yeah, that's seriously, when I play Shadowrun, I don't leave loose ends. I grease everybody. Once I have what I need from you, you're done. You're dead. Goodbye. Blapita. Well, and that's precisely why right there, because GMs love to use those guys as, like, random little hanging tidbits that come back around later to bite you in the ass. Fortunately, it wasn't an option. Look who's back. Why don't you go egg a car or something and leave us alone? I, for one, enjoy Splattercat's visits. A hint of smile touches Lao's lips as Jin grumbles to himself. How can we help you? Sorry to interrupt. I was just wondering if you're all still having dreams. This again. Don't you have anything better to do? Yes, we're all still having the dreams. However, they've gotten a hell of a lot worse. Let's not go into detail. What if this information could help others? If I tell you, will you go away? 
Sure. He nods approvingly, then glances at Lao and Shiyu before continuing. Our dreams have become unpleasant, so to say. Darker and more violent. He runs his hand along his tightly cropped beard. Not all that healthy, if you ask me, especially for men of our age. We've come out of them in a daze sometimes. Feels like we've been punched in the senses and the imagery. You can see him shiver as he thinks about it. Well, I said no details, so no details. I summon up, Shiyu, Master Lao. I have nothing more to add, Shiyu. Shiyu's eyes bore into you. No, nothing. You seem upset. Is something wrong? Shiyu continues to stare at you and his face is pale. He opens his mouth and closes it. He seems to be struggling to find words. What's wrong with you, Shiyu? You better not be having a stroke. We're in the middle of a game. I think we already did this conversation. I'm pretty sure we already did that one. Like, 80% positive we already did that one. I need to find my Bodhi buddy up here and see if I can get myself into a Fairlight Excalibur because that mass amount of AP would be the shit. Wampo and Puppet. Let's see here. The Transis Highlander. God, we're so close to the Excalibur. We're so close. Do I have anything I can sell? Nothing but med kits, mummy spirit talisman. Hmm. The only way we're getting there is by essentially li liqu liquidating just about everything that we have. This one's got more HP, weirdly enough. Huh. 325, but it's got less AP. Interesting. I don't have the cash right now, but maybe when we get back, let's head for the MTR. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcastle for the next episode of Shadowrun Hong Kong. I will see you all in future episodes. Hi, do, everybody.